Um, for those of you who know me, I am a certified geek, and I can prove this. I have four robot dogs, um, three Max, two Segways, and one Chumby. Um, but along with my geekiness in the hardware space, I'm also a fiber nerd. Um, and being a fiber nerd has to do with loving all things related to yarn, knitting, sewing, etc. And um, I saw this t-shirt on a friend of mine a few weeks ago, and it did take me about five minutes to get the joke. Because um, I was like, 10 people, I, you know. So for those of you who don't get the joke, you will at the end of this presentation, because we're going to talk about knitting and binary. So first you have to understand what binary is. Binary is basically about the relationship between two entities. Um, and then that got taken a step further when it, got, um, when it was translated into technology, which is on and off switches that computers read is represented by the numbers one and zero. Now, binary for nerds is sort of like this cachet thing. So over the years, binary bling has sprung up. There's t-shirts, there's toys, there's jewelry, um, there's clocks, there's almost anything you can um, imagine that's sort of been translated into binary. Now, for if you don't know how to read binary, I have a binary clock at home on my mantle. Basically, it goes like this. Is the light on or off? If it's on, count it. And then what you do is you add up the values. And so um, just taking a look here, you'll see that it's 30519. So when it comes to the fundamentals of knitting, it's very similar. Again, you have two um, objects, two concepts that are very much related. And like the ones and the zeros in terms of coding and computing, you have the fundamentals of knitting, which are the purl stitch and the knit stitch. The purl looking like a little bump and the stitch being a flat stitch. Now, when you put the purls and knits together, you create a pattern. And patterns can be um, displayed in one of two ways. One is written out very similar to code, and the other is read via a chart. And um, patterns, how you read a pattern is you start from the bottom right-hand corner, you move um, uh, from bottom to top, from right to left, uh, look at the um, diagram to tell you what the symbols mean, and then up above you can see what that will represent. So after knitting for about a year and a half, I finally made the connection. Oh. Patterns are like code. Charts are like binary. Um, I could totally take some code, convert it into binary, and create a pattern and knit it. Yes, I do this in my free time. So first you have to find the right source. In my case, I decided to go with the Hello World app. It seemed like it was one of the first apps ever written. Maybe it should be my first foray into binary knitting. Um, I actually have the original Hello World app up here from 1972. I've got one in um, C++, Java, and then Perl. Um, I actually ended up choosing Android because um, it's sort of the new cool hotness in the developer space. Um, at any rate, what you do is you take your code, you convert it to binary, you decide how many stitches across you want your pattern to be, and then you can relate the zeros and ones and convert those into zeros being knit stitches and ones being purl stitches. So then you have to pick a canvas. What do I want to knit to show off my beautiful binary code? I thought it might be appropriate to knit gloves since I was doing a Hello World application. Um, but you can do all kinds of things, socks, hats, um, wristbands, um, washcloths, whatever you want to do. Just something that's going to be meaningful for you. So then I cast on, and what I did was I took a normal pattern um, for a pair of gloves, and um, I broke that down into 44 stitches, 10 stitches at the beginning being the normal pattern, 24 in the middle being the code, and then the last tunnel stitch stitches being back to the normal pattern. So there you see the normal pattern on the left and then the binary on the right. And um, here they are. Well, here's one of them. And I didn't, I was gonna wear both of them, but I only got uh, one done and I didn't wanna look like Michael Jackson during my presentation. So voila, this is a glove that's um, knitted in Android. So here I thought I was like this really cool genius person who figured this bizarre thing about, no. Turns out it's been done many, many times. Binary knitting in the wild is not a new thing. And in fact, there's three varieties of binary knitting in the wild. First, people knit the actual zeros and ones. Second, they use two colors to represent the on and off switches or the ones and zeros. And then finally, they knit the actual code. That was the... Um, Code red virus on the woman's scarf. Um, also, somebody took some dialogue from 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm sorry, Dave, I just can't do that. And they knit that into a sweater as well. So you can play around with words, not just clothes. For those of you who are fans of XKCD, me, I am, um, this is just pure love. I mean, she took the comic, she knitted a sweater. It's awesome. Um, I'm totally jealous. And then finally, um, there was a realization that, heck, 
this was around way before even knitters thought about it because the beginning of code, the Jacquard loom circa 1801, looks strangely familiar when you bring up a Fortran punch card. And so it turns out that the marriage between textiles and technology has been going on for a lot longer than Beth Goes has been around. Um, but if this is something that appeals to you and you want to like nerd out, there are tons of communities um, related to knitting. And the one I'd like to point out is the one that's M4K, and that's math for knitters. They're working with like Fibonacci. They're doing all kinds of cool stuff, calculus. Um, so thank you very much. And I'm a knitting geek. Thank you very much, Beth.